Hey there, I'm Corey with Daniel and Renewables. Today we're going to be looking at one of our Pites server rack batteries. Now these are a fantastic option for anyone who's looking to have some storage for their off-grid solar system or any battery backup systems. So we're going to take a moment, get inside the battery, I'll show you what's inside the box, and we'll take a quick look at the interior as well. We'll tear it down and I'll let you know some of the specs and some of the details on it. So here it is, the Pites Evox 48100R. Now this unit is going to give you 5.12 kilowatt hours of power. That's 51.2 volts at 100 amp hours. And the other fantastic thing about this battery is that it's UL1973 rated, which is fantastic for the North American market. Now I'm going to go through the front of the unit, as well as the general construction, some of their design choices, as well as open up and look at all the internal components. So stay tuned for that. So we got all the screws off here. We're just gonna peel the top off. Okay, so here we are. We're underneath the hood here. We've got a very nice looking battery here. We've got all of our cells encased. Nice steel casing. There's support structures along here. You've got all of your BMS and electronic hookups here as well. We'll get into a little bit more detail on all the internal components and continue digging in here and see what we can find. Okay, so if we take a look in here. So the nice thing about these batteries is They've got the battery bolted right to the case. So there's four bolts that run along here that attach it to this. I'm just going to pull these bus bars off here as well, very carefully. The nice thing is they do have a nice plastic lining here on the way to the terminals. So you don't have to worry about your tools grounding out to the case when you're pulling this off. So let me just get this pulled out. So pulling this cell apart was fairly easy, like this whole case comes out very, very easily. And then you've got this nice slick connector for your balance leads, which connects to the top of this package. You've got two 25.6 cells, that's going to give you 51.2, and they're both 100 amp hour rated packs. So let's open up this pack and I want to see what's inside. Okay guys, now that we've removed the plastic protecting the bus bars, we can see how they've connected everything inside the actual cells and in between the cells. So you've got eight cells, four on this side and four on this side. Your main bus points are here, your positive and your negative. And they've also welded the bus bars directly to the battery terminals. So there are no screw points, nothing to come loose. Also the BMS leads, you see here they have them attached to all the batteries. They've also added adhesive, so nothing can wiggle free. And over here, you've got your insulating tape again. And underneath, you have all your solder points. They've also added adhesive here, which is nice. Just make sure the wires don't get loose or end up getting jostled at any point. Now, the nice point about this is you have the connector point, which I removed earlier, which makes this cell pretty modular. Like, if you had one of these cells that was not functioning correctly, you could probably easily replace it with a new one. And it's just a very solid built pack. They've got the nice steel casing around the whole thing, so there's no room for any expansions in the cells. Now, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna pull this plastic portion off, and we'll take a look at the cells underneath. So I just wanna pull the side off the battery here, uh, just so you can get a look at how the internal construction is actually done. So. You've got your nice solid steel case, and they've also added a nice dielectric barrier along the edge. Now it's a little bit compressible as well. This just helps when you get this case together. It's gonna to keep everything nice and tight and allow the batteries to stay nice and solid in their positions. No, room, no real room for them to jostle around at all. And then we'll take a look here at the back of the battery. So let me just move this case out of the way. Let's take a peek at the back here. Now, as you can see, it's got half this case off, but you've got your four cells visible here, and then there's two more stacked underneath. So you've got your four lithium, or sorry, eight lithium phosphate batteries inside this pack, which is fantastic. 
Um, going to give you lots of power, lots of life. These batteries are good for 6,000 cycles plus, so you're going to get plenty of life out of these battery packs. Just want to give you a quick view of the array we got up, set up to charge the Pites batteries and test them out. We're running this to the charge controller. Uh, we've got six 340 ET solar modules hooked up in series. Then they're 340 watts per piece, so that gives us just about 2,000 watts of solar power fed in. I just want to put this battery under load and test the high voltage and the low voltage cutoff for this battery. Uh, I have already have a few of these batteries currently charging on a Schneider system. So here they are, two of them parallel, mounted to the wall here. We take a look up here, so we've got the Connex 100-600 charge controller and the uh, XW Pro inverter. So these batteries hooked up, working great. As you can see, we'll take a look at the system here. So charging currently from solar, right to the batteries. And we just have the laptop plugged in right now. So I'm gonna switch out the batteries, put it under load, and then we'll see what the battery cutout does. So just wanna dig into the BMS a little bit more here. So it's gonna give you uh, basic protection against over voltage uh, as well as over amperage. You've got high and low temperature shutdown, short circuit protection. Also, if you hook the power cables up backwards, it will also inform you of that, so it won't actually be able to power the unit. It also works to balance the cells via the lead, so it'll actively balance and ensure all the cells are the same. And then you're also going to get it to watch the charging of the batteries as well. And it has a redundant BMS put in, so it has one chip, but then it has a backup chip in case anything else happens to it. So it's going to be able to pick up if the other one cuts out, and it's going to basically take over for the one that's burnt out. So having that redundancy really helps with the longevity of that system. Uh, good chance you probably won't even need it. So I pulled the thermistor off here. I'm just going to test it real quick. I've set this up. I have on the AC side here, of the inverter, I have a heat gun. So we're gonna heat, actually heat up the thermistor and then we'll see the battery cut itself out and it'll actually turn off the heat gun. So we'll give it a little heat. And just imagine if this was the battery heating up. And as you see, kicks out. Heat gun turns itself off. The inverter has been powered down as well. So any heat buildup, cool temperatures as well, it's gonna make that battery kick out, protect your cells from being charged or discharged when the temperature conditions are not favorable or any other conditions may not be suitable for charging the battery. So very good to see and it's working just as intended. And we just cooled that thermistor down a little bit and then we're back running again. Everything's up and running perfectly. You're still feeding the charge into the batteries now from the solar outside, and we've got our inverter running just fine. So, hope you enjoyed our look inside the Pites E-Box 4800R. This is a fantastic server rack battery. The construction is really nice. I was really impressed by the cells and how firm they were and how well they're packed inside. You've got the redundant BMS in there, which is really nice if you have any issues with BMS. You've got the backup ready to kick in at any time, and this is going to work great in any 48 volt server uh, rack battery application. So whether you're doing a backup grid for your grid tie, or you need to do off-grid solar and you need a power supply battery bank, this is going to fit the bill for you. We're going to make the charge parameters for the Schneider inverters available for anyone who's interested in those, as well as the data sheets for these units too. So if you're curious about picking one up, and how it's gonna work for your system, then you can take a look at those. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us and have yourself a great day.